Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use both Gaia GPS and OnX, as well as tell you which one I would get if I was only getting one of these programs. Hey there, my name is Dewey Jones. I am a Colorado off-roader. Welcome to our channel where we mostly film off-road and overland trail guides. Now today is a little bit different. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is we're gonna be comparing OnX versus Gaia GPS. I'm also gonna tell you which one I think is better by the end of this video, as well as giving you a basic tutorial as far as I know how to use the programs so that you can navigate either of them easily. Now, I probably should just save you some time I think Gaia GPS is the better software, so if that's all you wanted to know out of this video, that's the one I would download. I know that may be different than what you're hearing from a lot of other off-road YouTubers, and I hope that this video will make sense and it will give you an idea of what to expect from each of them and why I am choosing Gaia GPS as the better software for here. But let's get right into this. I think I have something good for you guys. We are going to end up in a really sweet spot, but on the way, I'm going to tell you all about these programs. So let's. Uh, uh, get out there and see what we can do. All right, so before we leave this spot, we need to download offline maps. Now I do know we're going into an area with limited cell service. I personally think Gaia GPS is the better program for offline maps. The reason for this, as I'm gonna show you on my screen, we're gonna screen record it right now, and I'm gonna download uh, Gaia GPS. We're gonna go to it, and right now, let's see where we're at, we're right here. So I wanna record this trip that we're gonna be doing. And so let's go here, let's go download maps. And I do have a ton of maps already recorded, but we're going to just record where we're going. I think that should work, covers right here. And there we go, I'm gonna save it. I wanna download over my cellular network. I'm gonna pick, all right, I think those are fine for this one. We'll save them and we'll see how that goes. Now, I'm not in very good cell phone service right now, so we'll speed this up. So now we're gonna do on X off-road. Now I gave the win to Gaia GPS on this because on X requires you to download multiple squares. And luckily I got most of these done or it would take a long time since I don't really have good cell phone service here. The problem with on X is you get three options to go. You have low resolution, medium resolution, or high resolution. Now I usually use medium resolution, but to get a complete trail documented, that means I'm gonna have to usually download multiple segments and if you're in somewhere like where I'm at right now with not the greatest cell phone service or not the greatest connection that could take a little bit longer granted you can still get both done with with them they both do offline maps that's definitely a great thing that you can do it it's just a little bit easier for me with Gaia because I can create it based on where I'm going But we are currently on our way to a really cool location. I'm really hoping I timed this right. But let's talk about map base layers. This is map software. Both Gaia GPS and OnX are map software. And the key with that is having good maps. So let's talk about base layers. Now, base layers are the layers that layer your map and give you different kinds of information. Now, I absolutely think Gaia GPS has the absolute best base layers and there's so so many and I'm gonna be showing showing them to you throughout this video but just some of my favorites which I'll show right now are um, Gaia Overland I like uh, US Forest Service 2016 I also like National Geographic there's so many more as well like I usually have a topographical map or a satellite map Gaia has plenty of those now on X only has three options for base layers and that is you got a topographic map, you have a hybrid map, and you have a satellite map. They're great maps, but it's just not as detailed as Gaia GPS, and you can get so much more information with Gaia GPS. Like, I didn't even mention it, but my favorite map in Gaia GPS is the historic 1900s or the 1930s maps, because that gives me a lot of clues about the history of Colorado trails and I can see remnants that were once mines and you know where the roads were, what the roads were. I just think that is a really excellent aspect of Gaia GPS. So for me, Gaia GPS wins easily because of base layers uh, in this category. 
Hopefully you guys can hear me with this microphone, but now we're gonna discuss overlays, map overlays. Now, Gaia does have the superior amount of map overlays. I'm probably showing you some of them on the screen right now. They are just absolutely awesome. And you have so many different choices. Now, Onyx does have some overlays. They're just extremely limited in what your options are. So, this is why Gaia easily wins this category also, just because you have such great variety. All right, so Onyx really sells their private LAN layer. Apparently will charge you $99 a year. Double check what I've put on the screen, but they'll charge you extra to go to the elite membership. And this will give you the private LAN layer, which gives you all the names of all the people uh, that own land, which is useful information. You could potentially, if you've lost like something or if something happens out there on the trail, you can go find the owner of the land and get Get things taken care of. The problem I have is Gaia GPS with just my basic membership I have with Gaia GPS. Now I do pay for it so it's not the very the free membership but it's, it's a basic membership. I think I pay $35 a year for Gaia GPS. I have a private land layer on there and it also gives me all the names of the people there. I verified it. I checked it with some land that we own or my parents own and it had their names on it. So it is correct, it's accurate. To me, you know, why spend $99 when you can get it with Gaia for $35? All right, so now let's talk about importing GPX files. Now, you may not understand how this is important or why it's important, but let me kind of break it down. Um, GPX files are really neat tracks that you can download from the internet that give you like routes or give you uh, trips that you can do. For instance, I recently downloaded the Smoky Mountain 1000 as well as the Smoky Mountain 500. I downloaded these GPX files from a Facebook group um, and then I was easily able to import them into my Gaia GPS just like I'm showing on the screen right now. Now I do believe OnX allows you to download GPX files and put them into your program. I just have never used OnX in that way and I believe that you have to use the desktop application. Now let's talk about getting routed to the trails. Now, I really don't think either of these programs are good for that. I actually use Google Maps to get me where I need to go to a trailhead or whatnot. But you can use Gaia GPS to get you to a trailhead. Now I have used it before. I hopefully am showing you on the screen how to do it. Um, it kind of just happened for me. I think what you do is you do your route planning and you start and it'll kind of take you on there and you use it that way. To me, I don't really care for it that way. I rather use Google to get where I want to go and then start my trip recording or whatnot from that spot. So to me, Google wins for getting you to trailheads, but you can use Gaia and I haven't figured out how to use OnX in that way. I don't think you can use OnX in that way. So as far as I know, Gaia wins on getting you to trailheads, but really Google is the winner on this one. All right, while we wait to get past this one way, let's talk about using CarPlay. Now, most recently, you could only use Gaia GPS for CarPlay, but you can now use OnX for CarPlay. So I think they're both winners in this category. You can use them in CarPlay, so that's pretty nice. And right now, I'm pulling up Gaia GPS on my CarPlay. It's recording, it's showing me the line that it's recording this trip, and we'll go through that at the end just to see how long this trip took us and all that kind of information, but it looks pretty good. It has the Gaia GPS layer on it, which is the layer I had going. Now let's see what we have going on in OnX. OnX has the satellite map up. I'm guessing that was what I had going most recently and it's showing me tracking on it pretty good. We'll see how the tracking is at the end of this video, but so far this is going really well. 
All right, let's talk about getting trail information from your maps. Now, both Gaia GPS and OnX give you trail information from your map layers. Now, probably OnX has it in easier form to digest or easier forms to actually pick up because they highlight the entire map. So this might be a win for OnX. However, you can get the same information for the most part from Gaia GPS. You click on the trailhead and it'll give you information, either you know US Forest Service information or other information that they have gathered. Now, my big issue with the one X information is that I don't fully trust it. Now, they do have some really excellent. In a quarter mile, continue straight onto Colorado 119. The issue that I have with One X trail information is that I'm not really sure if I fully trust it. Now, they do have some really excellent maps of Colorado trails or excellent trail information of Colorado trails, but that's because they have imported the Funtrex books data into their maps. Now, I'm sure they paid for that from Funtrex, but the thing that they do is they change the rating scale, the rating scale down to their rating scale. And I've noticed that rating scale has been kind of off from what I I think as well as what Funtrex had in their books. Now, I haven't looked at their trail information in a while since then, but I kind of ran into issues most recently uh, when trying to get trail information for the Jeep Liberty. Trails Off-Road has not documented trails out in East Tennessee yet. Uh, Funtrex doesn't have books there. So I was using OnX to get information and I found that, you know, it wasn't as useful as I would like, but we'll get into that later when we talk about finding trails, just because I don't think our map software is the way to find trails, but we'll discuss that later. All right, let's talk about weather. Now, you can get weather information from your On X map. It has it really easy on there, kind of shows it. My issue with that is I don't use my map software to get weather. And this is also not a slight against uh, Gaia GPS because they also have weather information in their maps. It's just a little bit different on how you get it. Gaia GPS has NOAA data software maps and it updates every 12 hours. And that is a really cool layer because it shows you what the precipitation is like. So to me, you know, if you want to get your weather information from your map, OnX might be a little bit better for you but Gaia GPS has definitely has the cooler weather information from the map. And for me, that's the one I use. For recently, we did a really awesome trip, Marble to Aspen, and I planned that completely with Gaia GPS. And it was awesome. It gave me great information I'm probably showing you the first leg up there on the, the screen right now and how I got that first leg. You kind of have to, you know, pick and choose some of the points, especially when you have multiple options on where to go. But in reality, it was really cool. And I did this for the entire trip. So I had information on the entire three days of this off-road trip and it was just really awesome. I can't wait to bring you guys that overland trip guide, uh, which will be coming out when I get some more time to edit. Now, until recently, OnX did not have the ability to plan a trip out like this, so it would have been an easy win for Gaia. However, OnX is listening to its customers and they have now added route planning into their desktop app. Now, I don't use the desktop app, so I have not planned it with OnX. However, I did watch um, the OnX uh, specialist go through it, and it was really simple to do. It's just like how I did it with Gaia. But right now, Gaia wins for me because I can do it on my iPad and plan trips that way. And I really, I can't wait to show you that, that trip. And we got some really good stuff on it. Now we are on our way to our destination and I'm really hoping I got this timing right. Um, we'll see. 
But uh, at our final destination, we are gonna talk about using these apps to find trails. And thankfully, or I think finding trails is a little bit of our specialty here. So I should have some good information for you, but let's get to this spot because I think some of you will actually appreciate the timing on this if I'm right. And it's only because they're extremely late today. Well, I've done it again. I've crashed the drone. I'm gonna go find it. I think it's back there. I really hope I find it. Uh, it's nice though, uh, DJI has a new uh, method. It kind of shows you its last trip, its last route. So we'll see it. I don't have maps, which is, I know my big issue, but we're gonna see if we can find it. Luckily, it wasn't that far away, but I think we're done with the drone for now, and we still have time to make what I was trying to get us to. So, I still have to finish this video. And, yeah. Oh, man. All right, to the GoPro. I really don't think map software is the way to find trails. Now I have made a video on this, it's an old video. I need to really probably update it and I need to update it for both East Coast and West Coast. So if that's something you guys would like to see, hit that subscribe button because I'm sure I will make that in the future. But out here in the West, the way to do find the best trails, because that's important for this channel where we film trail guides, I need to make sure that I'm not wasting my time and showing you the best trails and that is Funtrex and Trails Off-Road. Funtrex has curated some really great trails in their books. And so you have a good information and you can kind of go through the whole book and just get ideas. Oh man, those pictures are awesome. I'd love to do that trail. Something like that. That's why I really like Funtrex, but Trails Off-Road has the same kind of information, has the trail broken down by everything that's in there. And you have pictures and show you kind of what the trail is like. However, East Coast, you don't really have those same options. So in the East, the way I like to find trails is by Facebook groups, local Facebook groups. And in fact, that's how I really found the trails that I took the Jeep Liberty on most recently. It was all from the East Tennessee Overlanders group and they really hooked me up and told me really good trails for my Jeep Liberty. And I think it's gonna be an amazing series. Right now, Hurricane Creek is published and I gotta get the other ones done, but I think you guys are gonna love where I take that Jeep Liberty. And it's all thanks to that East Tennessee Overlanders group. So, you know, it's up to you, but I think, I think we're just in time. So let me get this video and then we will break down this Onyx versus Gaia in a breakdown and end this video. Thanks for indulging me on that. I was just trying to make this bland video a little bit more interesting, but let's finish it out. On X versus Gaia GPS on the screen right now, the comparison chart. Now, I personally think just, this is my ratings. I think Gaia is the better software. If I was only to buy one program, I would buy Gaia GPS. It just has so much more functionality than the other. And it's really not that hard to use once you figure it out, once you start using it. Now, this channel is a off-road and overland trail guide making channel. So I'm gonna to continue to have on X membership as well as a Gaia GPS membership. Continue to use Trails Off Road, continue to use Fun Treks. And if you wanna see how we use all those together to make some hopefully pretty good trail guides, 